Hi guys, this is week two of English presentation, and today we're going to talk about the introduction. Of course, whenever you have to present, you have to introduce your topics, introduce your presentation, and today this is like the beginning of uh, the whole journey into the presentation world. Okay, so let's look at the slides together. Uh, first, we have a quote here, and I think it's a convenient quote for our lessons. Uh, it says, "Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best." This is by Saint Jerome. Uh, now, if you think of the meaning, it means that whenever you try to do something, don't just make it a good effort, but try to make a better effort. At doing this, and try to strive to your best, because if you think this is good enough for you, and then you don't improve anything, you can't go to another level to be better or even to be best. And who knows? So just keep trying and keep practicing. Okay, especially in your presentation. Now, what I'm going to talk about today, the introduction part, I'm going to include the presentation myths. Uh, which is like common beliefs that most people think uh, presentation is about, uh, and so we have to know what is a good presentation. Uh, and then next we have parts of a presentation. So what constitute in one presentation? You need an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Uh, also. Today we're going to focus on the introduction, right? So we need to know what's the opening sentence. Like that's normally the key to do a good presentation because, especially now, it's online presentation. People have really short span of attention, so you need to grab their attention within seconds, okay? Not minutes. Uh, and so we have something uh, for in class practice called semester break. Uh, this will be done in class, okay? Not on this video, but you can think about the assignment first before we do it in real time in the class. And then the homework, my favorite fruit, practice introduction. Like I said, this course has homeworks too. Now, what is a presentation in general? Uh, Whenever you think of a presentation, I have a question. Have you ever seen or made a presentation before? Or are you a presentation virgin? I think not. Then try to think back, mm, when did you see a presentation? And why did you go and see that presentation? Maybe it's from your friends. Maybe it's from your teachers. Or even it's from famous people on television or in, on the internet. Could be. Now... For this course, we, of course, we have to identify and define what a presentation is. So in broad terms, a presentation is, of course, a talk. Someone talk to you. Mm. It's a talk by what? One person or a group of people. Could be group, could be one, like I said. But the key thing is, this talk is not just gibberish. It's not just gossiping. It's there's a purpose in that talk. It's the talk that introduces, explains, promotes, and or describes a particular subject. Mm -hmm. And the objective has to be clear and identifiable. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to a specific audience. Uh, so of course you can do like a presentation in TED Talks that you see like, People all over the world can see it, but whenever you do uh, create your own presentation, it's better to have like a certain picture of who your audience is going to be in mind, because then you can strategize your own presentation to really what you call catch their attention and make them feel what you feel in that presentation. Now. Presentation myths, of course, there are so many beliefs that, oh, whoever can, what do you call, uh, stand on that stage and do a presentation, oh, there must be a particular uh, aspect to that person. Now, let's see if these 10 statements are true or false, and we'll see why it's true or false. 
Now, number one, you might think that a good speaker or presenter is never nervous. Like whenever you see, like even Apple, when whenever Apple open, like introduce their new iPhones, right, or their new iPad, their new MacBook, they look so professional. They never stutter. They never skip the beat whenever they present. Everything looks smooth and perfect, right? So maybe you think, oh, that speaker, like Steve Jobs. He must never feel nervous. Mm. So think about it first. You don't have to tell me yet if that is true or false. Now the second point, uh, number two, the visual aids. We call that visual aids, okay? The thing we call PowerPoints, videos, handouts, or slides. Ah, uh, these are the most important part of a presentation. That's why like people spend so much time, so much money in perfecting their presentation slides. That's why people go to Canva, to other websites to create, like to find the perfect template, a beautiful and interesting template. Maybe, but is it the most important part? Think about it. Now, number three, you should memorize your presentation and not use notes. For some people, it it looks more impressive to just. Stand on the stage, nothing in hand, and then can speak for a whole hour, thirty minutes, ten minutes, whatever, without looking at any notes at all. Like like that person in the, is an actor. Uh, that that they look like they can memorize anything. What and we feel like we are so impressive because of that. Now. Okay, and then number four, silence is never good in a presentation. Uh, so for some speakers. Uh, you can see like for certain speakers who speak really fast, or sometimes they seem like they can't seem to catch their breaths. Uh, for me, for example, whenever I feel nervous, I tend to speak quite quickly and then without the pause to breathe because I feel like. Uh, silence is quite intimidating. Like whenever there's a silence in class, we normally think that oh, dead air is not good. But we'll see if that's true or not. Now, number five, preparing a presentation only requires you to research your topic, gather information, and then organize your talk according to that information. Uh, so that's why some people think, okay, presentation. Oh, if you have to present about uh, maybe iPhone, ah, like iPhone twelve. Myths about iPhone 12, ah, like so. You just research, okay? You find rumors of iPhone 12 or the specification, so you kind of like gather information, and then when the presentation time arrives, you just show them numbers, show them stats, show them those information you find, right? And you think, okay, that's it. That's what presentation is all about. You can th think like that, but there are also reasons why why that's not the only way to do a presentation, okay? Ah, now, as you can see, all these boxes are false, okay? But I will explain why on the next two slides, okay? So bear with me. Now, number six to ten, let's see. What you say, such as your ideas, your grammar, your vocabulary, is more important than how you say it. So people are always feel like they need a script. Like when they have to uh, open a ceremony, they always have this script and they try to stick to the script because that's the correct grammar, correct vocabulary, right? Um, so that that's why some people tend to spend. Uh, what do you call it, too much time on this instead of how you say that out loud? Nah. Uh, well, let's think about it now. And number seven, the audience is not important until you start speaking. So for some people, they just um, uh, walk to the podium. So imagine there's a podium and there's a stage. And then the speaker just walk directly to the podium. Maybe shuffle the papers around and then okay. And then address the audience. But actually, you might, when you, whenever the audience eyes see the person, that's already giving them certain impression, because in the audience's head, uh, they're going to think, mm, "Is he a good presentation? Oh, he dressed funny today. Maybe he's not a good speaker." All these thoughts already occurred whenever that, whenever the audience see the presenter. So think about it. Now, number eight, you should always have a script to read when you are presenting. 
So for number eight, it means uh, these believe, uh, they believe that uh, a script is everything. So you cannot astray from the script. You cannot say something outside the script. Well, you, we will find that kind of information, of course, like whenever, you, if you ever see like a really famous, um, maybe lecturer, maybe like an academic or even a spokesperson from the government, you see, they have a script and they really just talk about what's in the script. But you can see there's a bad side for that, like the disadvantage, okay? Now, number nine, the audience will pay attention to everything you say equally. That's the key. So with this belief, they believe that um, the front person, the front row people and the back row people, that they equally focus on the presenter. But you might find that in reality, that might be different. Even just in the classroom that you spend with your friends, there, there are even different kinds of people sitting in the front and in the back, so, and you can see their different behaviors. So it's hard to justify that the front row, the back room, the corner, they all focus on the presenter equally, okay? Now, for number 10, the last one, visual aids should include a lot of information so the audience can read the presentation if they do not understand you. So this kind of presenter think that they decided to put the whole script on the slides that you see. So uh, if they have to present about maybe climate change in Thailand, they besides the numbers and figures and graphs, they also put the script in there, something that has lots of text and information. Uh, and they figured that, okay, even if they fail in their speaking, well, at least the audience can read themselves on the screen. So the presenter is less important at that way. So maybe, maybe they think that that kind of method will, what do you call, lessen the pressure they feel, okay? Now, we'll see if that's true or not. Now, let's see the boxes. False, 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 and false, see? So these are all myths, okay? It's not true. It's not always true. I would say it's not 100% true. Maybe some presenters can get away with certain, what do you call certain thinking, certain strategies. But for this course, I don't recommend these 10 ideas, okay? Now we'll see why, 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 and why these are myths and what is actually a good presentation. So, the, the thinking that a good speaker or presenter is never nervous, of course not. Every, everyone is a human, right? So you deserve a right to be nervous. You can be nervous, but, and it's natural too, but the key is don't let it control you. So whenever when you have to stand in front of many people, okay, and then you start to feel like, Maybe you start to sweat, you start, your heartbeat starts beating faster. It's natural. Just don't let it control you. It means don't let it overwhelm your overall performance. Thai people are kind. They understand that, okay, you might, ooh, you speak that word incorrectly. It's okay. Just try to regain control and then get back to your rhythm, get back to your presentation. Uh, so the key is actually not to suppress your nervousness, but the key is to deal with your nervousness because each person deal with nervousness differently. For some people, they, they might imagine the audiences as dolls or as their toys. So if you imagine them not being humans, maybe they, the inhuman objects can't talk you back, so they feel relaxed, more relaxed, right? But for some people, they imagine their family faces on, yeah, like in the audience's face, so they feel, oh, a uh, hi, auntie, something like that. So it's like, uh, what do you call, could be uh, a trick to treat yourself that, oh, these are all my family, so I don't have to feel worried when I present, okay? And, well, 
Another way is you can control it with preparation. Because imagine that if you have never talked about this subject before or this topic, and then you have to say it for the first time in front of everyone else, that is really nerve-wracking. Okay, really nervous, of course. But if you have talked about this subject for 10 times, like for me, if I have to teach this class like 10 sections, of course, in section 10, I might never need a script. I just talk and talk because I already like familiarize myself with each slides. Okay, so preparation is quite helpful, really. Okay, it's to deal with your nervousness, not to please the teacher. Okay. Now, as for the PowerPoint, video hands out and slides, uh, they are not the most important part of the presentation, okay? The most important part is you yourself, the presenter, because these are just tools to support your words. So imagine when Nodudong, if you have to imagine, right? If Nodudong, when he has to do, uh, what do you call it, like a stand-up comedy, okay, Nodudong can use a projector to show certain slides certain images but the key focus people would focus more mainly on the presenter himself on not udom himself so they focus on his words of course more than the visual aids they see so whenever you design your visual aids don't let it be like the main points it's supposed to be a tool to support your own explanation your own words Okay, so no need to put all the text, all your script on the slides or on the presentation. Now, number three, you should memorize your presentation and not use notes. Well, we are not all actors. Some of us have really short term memory like a goldfish, me for example. Okay, so I can't memorize everything. So you are actually allowed to use notes. And for in this case, memorization is actually dangerous. Do you know why? Because notes, if you have these scripts, these notes, it's the sense of safety and support for you. But it's not the whole thing. It, your life will become dependent on this. So if you have like an actual script, right? Good morning, teacher. Uh, me and my group will present uh, number one, number two. So imagine this, like if you have a script like that and whenever you forget about things you have to talk about and then you see the script again, your eyes will glue to the paper line by line because it's our instinct to read every line, right? So in the end, instead of, we are not all reporters, right? It's so hard for us to have a script here, but still have eye contact with the audiences with the or with the camera in some cases. So we tend it's human instincts to stick to have your eyes glued to the paper instead of the audience that will distract the audiences and the audiences can lose like their attention to you quite quickly if they see you like just focus on the paper instead of them okay so you can have not the whole script okay just notes that's for safety and support for yourself because at least you know topic number one what are you going to talk about then what's the next topic like number one two three four yes you can use headlines you can use bullet bullet notes uh just like bullet points for you like indicators but the rest i don't recommend writing the whole script during your rehearsal yes but not on stage on the real presentation huh? okay next one number four silence is never good in a presentation well no if i just keep talking the whole hour 30 minutes without pausing without letting you breathe without you might feel confused all right because pause or silence is actually good in a presentation you can use that to an effect how to make the audience think okay so if i say ah uh students so uh what's your favorite uh dinner or, or what's your favorite dish in mfu okay uh and then if i just talk okay uh maybe you think of some thumb maybe you think of rice maybe you think of noodles but in the end i think like this is the best and then i keep talking like this one hour you are going to feel like when is she going to stop talking you are going to feel fed up with me for sure but 
if I pause, if I have space for them to think. Now, students think. Hmm. What have we learned from uh, maybe what do you call whenever? Uh, let Let's just say like okay. What what? Why do we have to learn in the university? Why do we need these special degrees? What does it do to your life? And then I pause. Hmm. Now they're going to think about my work. They're going to think about their life that is related to the question I just asked. So that the silence can actually be a tool to encourage the audiences to think carefully of what you've just said. If I just talk like this continuously, their attention could be like at fifty percent, right? But if I talk and then pause. Okay, so think about what this means to your life. Time. What is time to your life? See, their attention can get too big. They're going to focus on the words and on that pause. Their attention can increase to seventy percent, right? Because they have to, hmm, time, life. What am I doing here? Something like that. Okay, it can make them really think. Okay, next one. Preparing a presentation only requires you to research your topic, gather information, and organize your talk. No, that's not the whole component of a good presentation. Okay, because you need to think about everything else too. There's so many elements in a presentation that can affect the audience. Even if you have perfected your research, perfected your information, perfected your organization, but what about the presenter? What about the visual aids? You need to think about other things too, like the audiences. Like if they're, even if I prepared a perfect slide, perfect information, but what if we have to sit together in a room without an air conditioning? Like it's going to be so hot, and the patients, like they, you, you guys are not going to be patient enough to listen to me for one hour straight, right? If it's too hot for you, right? Or even the time. What if I ask you, okay, students, we are going to come to class at seven a.m. in the morning. I can predict that. What even if I prepared the most interesting slides in the world, you are all going to fall asleep because it's too early, right? And the venue, of course, if you talk, if you're doing your presentation outdoor, you are going to need to project your sounds more loudly, more clearly, because who knows what sounds you're going to get from outside, right? So that's more pressure than indoors. Huh? Now, number six, what you say. Your ideas, grammar, vocabulary is more important than how you say it. Well, that's not always the case, because the way you say it is actually the key for your communication. It's the key for your message. So imagine that you, oh, this professor, this researcher is really interest, like he's really famous. So imagine if. I can invite a Nobel Prize winner to give a lecture in this course, but you imagine like Einstein or really bright minds. They talk so fast, like what they have, uh, like their content is very interesting. Someone prepared this for him, but when he talk, he just say, "Everyone, please gather here. We are going to talk about this, and this is really interesting." Like. You are not going to like even if the content is so great, the grammar, vocabulary, perfect English. But if that person doesn't show that he tries to communicate with the audience, of course they are going to like, what do you call it? Uh, stop their attention to him, or they are going to be like feel really against him. Like, oh, I don't like this presenter, right? So that really has an effect. Also. Emotion is quite important because it shows credibility. So imagine that um, if we, if this coronavirus gets more serious, and maybe the leader of our country has to give a presentation, not not give a presentation, has to read a speech, and then the speech is really strong, really credible. That oh, Thailand will. We will never be afraid of another wave of coronavirus. But imagine if his voice is shaky. What if he says, "Oh, Thailand will pass this threat uh, smoothly," and then he looks like 
it, his eyes will like look moving, look smooth all the time, or like he seems nervous, he has sweats. That kind of thing actually be betrays his credibility, okay? Because it seems like he doesn't believe in what he is saying. And if he doesn't look like he believe in what he's saying, how can he convince the people to believe in him, okay? So that's how you say it's sometimes important more than what you are saying, okay? Now, number seven, the audience is not important until you start speaking. Uh -uh, wrong. Why? Because you have to think about the audience from the beginning. You can't just ignore them for like the length of time. Like it, it, it will seem like that person is in their own head, in their own world. Um, and then why? Think about this. Consider the audience. If I just, when, whenever I come to class, right? Uh, before I actually begin my lessons, if I just open the door uh, and then not looking at anyone and then sit at the computer, spend 10 minutes to prepare all the slides, all the things, and during that time, not looking at you guys at all, imagine the tension, imagine the atmosphere. It's going to be like really quiet, really tense, right? It, and then when I start, the presentation, okay, okay, When it, and then I finish every slide, right? And then I look at you guys and I say, good morning, everyone. That is going to be like so shocking for you guys, right? Because you guys see me so tense before, not looking at anyone, not talking to anyone. And then suddenly, fung, sudden change of tones and emotion, like smiling, that's so fake, right? So they won't feel, what do you call The audiences can feel disoriented or feel like this person is fake, okay? It's a fake. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. Try to have your audiences in mind whenever you show up to them, okay? Now for number eight, you should always have a script to read when you're presenting. So this means like uh, the whole paper, maybe like two or three sheets of paper, and then read from the whole thing. Uh, try not to do that, okay? Why? Because they are dangerous. Uh, keyword, note cards are safe. There are differences in that. So imagine that I have a whole notebook like this, okay? And then I write all my scripts here. I'm going to say, good morning, everyone. My name is today. I'm going to present about, see, I don't have interaction with the audience at all. Um, or even if, okay, she's, uh, is the most important part of our diet. Maybe I look at, okay, she's the most important of our diet. It It's lessen the effect of your presentation, okay? And if the key thing, do you know why it's dangerous? Because if you in Thai, it would mean, we call it lut, right? So in English, it's like if you miss one line, like you were in line five, you're talking in line five, and then instead of talk, uh, speaking line six, you skip it to line seven and then as you say it you feel like and then cheese is very important to us, to us all because uh the mob is going to huh? and then you're going to look nervous and then you realize you're you you're making a mistake and then you have to go back and oh, oh sorry sorry oh actually cheese is very important because see it looks like unprofessional but if you only have this is the whole thing right and then you have to flip 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 pages after pages doesn't look professional at all but if you just have like one piece of paper okay and then you just write uh note cards keywords okay keyword that's the key so you just write introduction you write like topic one types of sheets uh one two three four right and then uh places to buy sheets okay and then one two three four then you can, okay, now you know, you can just look at here and then you know, okay, next you have to go to uh, blue cheese. Uh, and then next you have to say places where you can buy cheese, right? Then you don't have to look at the script at all. You just talk, okay? You just rehearse what you have rehearsed before, okay? These are safer, safer than the whole script. Because imagine like if you forgot one page of your script, you're going to look really like nervous you are not going to because you don't re you don't rehearse right and then you rely on your script whenever there are any mistakes or errors it's very evident okay but if you have note cards in your hand even if you go outside the topic 
I won't even know. It's so it's harder to recognize the mistakes. Okay. Now, number nine, your audience will pay attention to everything you say equally. Well, <laughs> not exactly. Okay, you've got like uh, someone who's ooh, very paying attention to your presentation. They will like, mm -mm, okay, okay, mm, yes. But you also have someone who like. <sighs> When is this going to finish? And then, uh, okay, okay, mm, okay. See, even our attention spans, each person has different attention span, okay? So you have to show the audience. Uh, you can't just, um, what do you call? You can't just say whatever you have on your notes. You have to pay attention to them. If you feel like you're starting to lose your audiences, when, like, if, when you show numbers, statistics that's the page where people hate okay people hate to hear like lots of numbers they're going to lose their interest quite easily so you have to pay more attention to them use your voice to guide them okay so uh with the number you see well maybe you don't need see you can change the pace you can change the pitch you can even address them like uh directly so at first you might say okay there are three types of sheet ta -da -da, ta -da -da. but then okay someone in the back what do you think what's your favorite cheese because you start to see that people in the back they are, they are like dozing off like almost falling asleep so you can grab their attention there and then to bring them back to the presentation okay now, for number 10, the last one. We show aids should include a lot of information so yons can read the presentation if they do not understand you. This is a myth. This is wrong. Because why? Look at the verb here, okay? The audience can read the presentation. What's the point of the presentation if they have to read it, okay? You can... Whatever information or specific information, the details that you can't possibly... Uh, say in your short time of talking actually you can print that out and we call that a handout okay so if you can't like you can't put all the text you have on the slides uh, because it's going to be too small for them to see don't worry just print it in a4 paper right and then give it to them okay if you can pay attention to the handout we gave you you can see that um the first year uh after you is uh profit is quite small but then the next year it jumps forward see then yes they can read from that but if they have to squint their eyes and try to see those small numbers in the presentation they're going to lose their interest okay so visuals should not contain a lot of content that's the key visuals should support the presentation not the key okay not the content it should be from what they hear from you okay the speech uh the content is there but not on the presentation huh? okay because why too much information equals distraction see like i said if you only show them like a whole page of like budget school budget and then talk like one by one like in the list they're going to lose their interest it distracts them now let's come to parts of a presentation uh for parts of a presentation of course you need the beginning and that beginning we call introduction and a good introduction has to have three g's not 3g phone internet connection okay the 3g is greet the audience say hi good morning um welcome whatever phrase you can think of okay to because if you just get on the podium and say there are three cheeses and then they're going to huh you can lose their interest okay greet them first to show that you will respect them that you care for them okay get them to be on the same side as you now second grab the audience's attention so imagine that i'm a lecturer right and i i see you for the first time in the first class but you guys you just arrived and then you feel like Oh, I haven't seen my friend for a long time, so I want to chat with them, right? And then imagine that you if I don't grab your attention, you are not going to know that, okay, this is the beginning. Uh -uh. So maybe I have to clap my hands. 
okay, focus. We are going to start now, okay? If I don't grab your attention like this, and then I say, okay, students, uh, open page one. Uh, some friends, they're still gossiping about what, what, like, what their idols are doing last night, like, were doing last night. Maybe they're, they're talking about something. They don't even know that the presentation or the lecture has already started. That's why that you need to grab the audience's attention, okay? And then the last one, give the structure. Be uh, why structure important is important? Well, it explains what you're doing and how you will do it. So imagine if you, if you signed up onto certain talk or certain workshop, and then if that person just say, okay, there are three types of cheese, uh, and then and then you got bored and then you sneak out, right? But then in the end, they actually, oh, okay, and now we're going to, I'm going to give you one million baht to the audiences who remain. See, it means like if that person, that person, that speaker should say from the beginning that, okay, I'm going to talk about three types of cheese. And if you stay until the end, you're going to get one million baht. Ah, then that's more than just grab the attention, right? It t tells the structure of, bear with me. I'm going to talk about title sheets and then you can get your money. See, see, that's why it, it tell it, what do you call like the structure can help the audiences to, um, be patient. They know that, oh, okay. Uh, the presenter will talk about only two, two topics and then that's the end, right? Uh, but if you don't tell the audience, they're going to feel like, oh, when is this going to end? And then they can just quit or like walk out. Okay. Now for the body, uh, this is the most important. Account, okay. You can grab their attention. You can have like a perfect finale. Okay. Perfect ending. But you also, you need the perfect body is more important because that's where you spend most of your present presentation time on the body part the content okay this is why we do the presentation even okay this is the reason why this presentation exists so you have to focus on the body okay also be careful what information you will present because uh like if i want to present about cheese like i said if i just talk about okay the history of cheese cheese uh is a cre was created uh, 3000 years ago by a man named urang utang all the audiences are going to fall asleep right so you have to select which part of that information that is relevant and interesting you have to decide what's important for the audiences you don't this is what you don't do you don't just copy the information and then paste the whole information pages of information directly on the slides okay you're going to lose their interest quickly okay now and of course you have to imagine that if you give a talk for like one hour you should have a conclusion for your audience to review your main points maybe they or they lose their interest since the first 15 minutes so if they stick until the end, at least remind them, okay, what I've talked about is the history of cheese, the types of cheese, da, 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 okay? So please give them like main points why they are sitting here, like what they have, what they have just heard, they might need a repetition of that, okay? And then leave the audience wanting more, that's the key. So that's why do you know why why apple when they present a new iphone they always talk about uh what you call new features uh specifications and other details first but they put the price at the end for last because they know that they have to build up the audience um if they just stop the art uh, what you call stop the presentation at okay and the new iphone will last for 12 hours and then that's it. They walk down from stage. Uh, then their the audience will lose their interest. Like, oh, okay, this is just fact sheet. Why am I doing here? So they say, so they can present their prize at the end because they know that, okay, if you 
we all know the price of iPhone, right? Normally, it's around da -da -da, 100, uh, maybe $1,000, okay? But if you say, but if uh, you pre-order it now, we will give you an AirPod for free. Well, the audience will, will feel like, oh, there's something more to this. Now, like, at, so at the end of the presentation, all the good things they've said, and then they, what do you call it? They end the presentation perfectly with something that attracts the audiences to make them want something more, then that's like really perfect, okay? Or if not leave the audience wanting more, then at least leave the audience something to think about, okay? Make them think about what you are doing next, uh, about the issue you want them to think about, okay? That will be more, more, much more effective than just stand, talk what you want to say and then just leave the stage, okay? It's just informing. So informing is not enough. Persuading or uh, posing questions makes them think more of the discussion you just said, then that is more effective.